بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وصلى الله على رسول الله ما تفسير من شرط الصديا شرط خطر خطر أو أيضا exhortation advice I thought that we there wouldn't be a better advice than the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu and his uh, most honorable companions of Bakr and Omar. And uh, let's go over their advice at the time of their departure. Omar radiallahu anhu used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him martyrdom in the Medina of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma arzuqni shahadatan mawtan fi baladi nabiyyik. Uh, Allahumma rizukni shahadatan wa mawtan fi baladi nabiyyik. Oh Allah, give me martyrdom and let me die in the, in the uh, town of your messenger or prophet. And this was an interesting dua from Omar radiallahu anhu because we know that during the time of Omar radiallahu anhu, the Muslim state expanded all the way from the southern USSR states to Egypt, including Sham, parts of Turkey, Iraq, and so on. So for him to be uh, granted martyrdom in the uh, town of the Prophet Sallallahu it just meant one, one thing, assassination. Uh, couldn't be anything else. And subhanAllah, he was granted that. Uh, and he was, uh, his dua was answered. And, uh, uh, farewell pilgrimage, when Omar, uh, I'm sorry, not farewell pilgrimage, his own farewell pilgrimage, uh, like the, the Hajj after which he died, for the Allah in the, So, in the year that he died, he made Hajj, and it was reported that he piled some dust and, uh, you know, spread a garment over that uh, pile of dust and laid on top of it and said, اللهم قد رقع عظمي وكثرت رعياتي فاقبضني إليك اللهم قد رقع عظمي وكثرت رعياتي فاقبضني إليك غير مفتون ولا مضيع Oh Allah, I have become weak, my bones have become fragile وكثرت رعياتي and my responsibilities have become huge فاقبضني إليك غير مفتون ولا مضيع So take me back Uh, without, without getting, or without being misguided or uh, negligent, uh, before I become misguided or I become negligent towards my responsibilities. So, after which, Omar uh, who was praying in the masjid, leading the jama'ah, and Abu Lura and Majusi stabbed him three times. And uh, before he dropped, uh, he was keen enough, you know, uh, Omar is certainly the epitome of diligence, commitment, uh, integrity. So he was concerned about the prayer. Like if, you know, if he was the Imam, then someone has the lead. So he quickly grabbed on to uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Hawf and indicated to him to come forward and lead the Muslimin and, and, and the rest of the prayer. Uh, and then, after they finished the prayer, he said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, Ya ibn Abbas, Ya ibn Abbas, Ya ibn Abbas, Ya So Ibn Abbas came back and he told them, Oh Ibn Abbas, go and look for the one who killed me. Uh, go, see, go see who killed me. And Ibn Abbas came back and he said to Omar radiallahu anhu, who's our, to the our uh, Do you know why Omar looked for the killer? Uh, he did not look for the killer for any purpose except to make sure that he had not done anyone injustice uh, for which he retaliated from him. Uh, so he said, Alhamdulillah, الذي لم يجعل ميتتي على يد رجل 
شهيد أن لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الذي لم يجعل ميتتي على يد رجل سجد لله سجدا الحمد لله الذي لم يجعل ميتتي على يد رجل يحاجني بلا إله إلا الله يوم القيامة So he said, Alhamdulillah, that he made my death on the hands of a man that did not say La ilaha illallah. And Alhamdulillah, that made my death on the hands of a man that did not prostrate sincerely for Allah once. And Alhamdulillah, that, uh, made, that he made my death on the hands of a man uh, that would not use La ilaha illallah as a plea against me on the day of judgment. Uh, so he felt relieved that it was not a Muslim, it was, not, it was someone who kept them uh, out of hatred uh, because he is Omar, or in Persia and so on, and uh, ended the Persian uh, Empire. Uh, so that is why he killed them, but it was not because he had done him an injustice. And then, uh, what's also beautiful that, that uh, you know, you know, the, the last hours of Omar's life is that a man walked in, and man walked into his presence. Uh, the companions were surrounded him, and a man walked into his presence while he was bleeding to death. Uh, and the young man had his garment lower than his ankle. And Omar anhu at this time. You would certainly be busy with your bleeding wounds. The fact that you are bleeding to death would, would occupy you, uh, keep you from many other concerns. But Allah, <coughs> his diligence in following the Sunnah, his commitment to ordaining good and forbidding bad, to the last breath, uh, to the last drop of blood, uh, made him call this man and say to him, Ya ibn Afi, فإنه أتقى لربك وأتقى لثوبك أو أتقى لثوبك uh, Oh my nephew, just uh, lift up your garment it is more pious and that is also conducive to the cleanliness of your garment uh, and, uh, So, so the, the, the last few hours and it is certainly not all of it but the last few hours show sincerity, devotion commitment, diligence and following the sunnah, integrity, heedness uh, for the, the Muslims and for their salah and, and so on and so forth. So if you go to Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr, when Abu Bakr was uh, on the deathbed, he said to Aisha radiallahu anha, انظروا ثوبينها ذيني فاغسلوهما كفلوني فيهما فإن الحي أولى بالجديد من الميت uh, He said, uh, take those two garments of mine He used to have two garments The uh, one that he wore and a spare one and he said, take them, uh, clean them, wash them and, <clears throat> and uh, shroud me in them for the living is more deserving of new clothes than the, the dead. So don't waste time on my shrouds. <coughs> Take my two garments and wash them and shroud me in them. And, uh, and then he said to Omar anhu, that's uh, advice that he gave to Omar, but certainly it was not limited uh, to Omar, to Omar and the, Muslim, the rest of the Muslims. Uh, he said to Omar, Ya Omar, in your seek, I'll say a term. In Anta Kabil Ta'ani. Oh, Omar, let me give you some advice if you would accept from me. And just the beginning of all, say, is so beautiful because <clears throat> despite uh, the status of Abu Bakr, Allah Anhu, and his highest station. Uh, he knew that he was not the Prophet uh, He knew that he is one of the believers, like Omar So it is not binding on Omar to accept. He was humble enough to say to Omar, if you, if you accept, you know, here is my advice, if you 
would accept it because he knew that he was not uh, <clears throat> he uh, was not in the station of the messenger of Allah where everybody has to take from him uh, and accept with in full submission. So he said to him, إِنِّي أُصِيْتَ وَصِيَّةَ لِنَا أَنْ تَقَبِتَ عَنِّي And then he said, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ إِنَّ لِلَّهِ حَقًّا بِالْلَّيْنِ لَا يَقْبَلُهُ بِالنَّهَارِ وَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ حَقًّا بِالنَّهَارِ لَا يَقْبَلُهُ بِالْلَّيْنِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ النَّافِرَةَ حَتَّى تُؤَدَّ الْفَرِيضَ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ النَّافِرَةَ حَتَّى تُؤَدَّ الْفَرِيضَ إِنَّ لِلَّهِ حَقًّا بِالْلَّيْنِ لَا يَقْبَلُهُ بِالنَّهَارِ Allah has rights at night that you would not accept them during the day. And Allah has nights during the day that you would not accept at night. Uh, basically, do what is do what is binding on you. Do what is incumbent on you. Do fulfill the rights of Allah timely and promptly, without any reluctance, without any delinquence. Don't defer and don't switch things up. It is not up to you. It is not based on what you like. It is about what He, Azza wa Jalla, likes. So do what He wants at the time He wants, uh, the way He wants. And then He said to him, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ النَّافِرَ حَتَّى تُعَدَّرْ فَرِيدًا And know that Allah will not accept the nafila until the farida has been fulfilled. Uh, and that, that's, that is beautiful and, and important because many of us are selective. Basically, we take what we like and we do more of what we like. So I like to fast. Fasting is good for me. It is healthy, uh, usually. Uh, so I fast every Monday and Thursday. Yet, I would violate the, you know, Madhulullah. I would transgress uh, Maharim Allah, the sanctuaries of Allah, trespass, transgress, violate, compromise. But I would still fast every Monday and Thursday. And I would still give charity because it's easy on me to give charity because I have plenty of money. Uh, or it just happened to be easy on me. Or I would still go to Umrah and come back and go back and come back. Uh, but it is not like this. Uh, Allah cannot be deceived. Allah cannot be deceived. Allah will not accept an nafira until the farida is fulfilled. So be straight on his uh, command because he is not one to be deceived. And then Abu Bakr said to him, uh, know that the, the, the scales of those whose scales are heavy are, on the Day of Judgment are heavy because of their following of the truth. The truth is heavy. We shall reveal to you a heavy, a weighty commandment. Uh, truth is heavy because they follow the truth and because they took it seriously. Because the truth was weighty on them. They took it seriously. And the light the scales of those whose scales are light on the day of judgment are light because of their following of falsehood and because of their taking it light. They, 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 they followed falsehood and they, take, they took it light. And that was the advice of Abu Bakr to uh, Omar at the time of his departure from this world. So if, <clears throat> if you go a step up, you go up all the way to the Prophet So yeah, Ibn reports this from Anas that the Prophet uh, you know, right before uh, the departure is
I for the pleasure of us all. أنا سأ أنا أقول الإمام كلاجلة في صدره لا يكاد يفيد بها لسان. He used to say this word. He vibrated in his chest. His tongue was almost incapable of uttering them. So what was he saying? الصلاة الصلاة وما ملكة إيمانك. الصلاة الصلاة وما ملكة إيمانك. Uh, I enjoin you, I enjoin you to establish the prayers, salah, salah, the prayers, the prayers. Meaning I enjoin you to establish the prayers. Take care of the prayers. Pay attention to your prayers. And, and those, those your right hands possess. Uh, I enjoin you to be kind to those who, uh, whom uh, your right hands possess. And why did the Prophet ﷺ select those two uh, matters to emphasize? Basically, the Prophet ﷺ was given, was given Jama al the most comprehensive of all speech. So it is not basically just like a random selection. A salah is the right of Allah upon us. And then the Prophet ﷺ wanted to mention that uh, when I wanted to exhort us to commit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill his rights as the creator, but also fulfill the rights of the creation. Because you would not have fulfilled the rights of the creator <coughs> until you have shown kindness to his creation. That is what I like the Imam. So why did he choose what the Malik al Because the most important, you know, it is the most important that you fulfill the rights of the weaker sectors of the society. It was reported by Ibn Majah from Jabir radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu said, If in Qaddis Allah, ummatan la yafazuna lil da'ifi haqqa. How could Allah glorify a nation? Meaning that Allah would not glorify a nation. If they do not, Fulfill the rights of the weak, if we do not the rights of the weak for him or her. So, Abu Malakat Imanukum is basically to point out the importance of fulfilling, discharging your obligations towards the lost creation, most particularly the weaker uh, uh, creations, and he chose Abu Malakat Imanukum to point to the south. So, uh, in, in, in just those few words, the Prophet ﷺ uh, enjoined us to fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, and His uh, creation. So, these are some of the pearls of wisdom and advice from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And his most honorable companions. Uh, what what remains is how much of it that we would take and benefit from, take seriously and benefit from. And that that part is up to us.